Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned or white blue green mid range creature deck built around Okatra for more of the spark. God Eternal Okatra, 5 mana for a 3 6 legendary creature, zombie god with a double strike that says whenever we cast a creature spell, create a 4 4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance, which is a very powerful effect worth building around, which is why we have all these mana creatures to help us ramp into Okatra ahead of schedule. And then, of course, most of the deck consists of creatures, so they will all trigger Okatra to help us make those 4 4s. And then, whenever Okatra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, we can return it into our library third from the top, so we can cast it once again. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here, starting out with the one drops where of course we've got the full four copies of Lanor Elves, a creature that helps us ramp into a Catra, so perfect for the deck. Then at two mana we've got more mana dorks, the full four copies of Paradise Druid, which has hexproof as long as it's untapped, and we can tap it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Then we've got the full four copies of Incubation Druid as well, which can also make one mana of any color a land we control could produce. And if it has a plus one plus one counter on it, it adds three mana instead of just one, and we can adapt it for five mana, putting three plus one plus one counters on it. So in the late game, it becomes an actual threat. And then we also have the full four copies of Growth Chamber Guardian, which also synergizes nicely with Okatra, because if we adapt it and put two plus one plus one counters on it, we can search our library for an additional copy of Growth Chamber Guardian and put it into our hand. So that provides a steady stream of creatures to help us trigger Okatra once we have the Eternal God in play. Then at 3 mana we've got some disruption in the form of Deputy of Detention that can exile an opposing and non-land permanent and then it stays exiled for as long as the Deputy is in play. And of course it's also a creature that will help us trigger Okatra, so a creature that does double duty as removal is perfect. And then we also have two copies of Knight of Autumn, which is also a pretty versatile card, can come into play with two additional plus one plus one counters, can destroy target artifact or enchantment, or can gain four life. So it shines against a mono red deck where we can destroy experimental frenzy or just gain life if we're in desperate need of gaining some life. And then we also have the full four copies of Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, which is also one of the build around cards in the deck, since she starts out at four loyalty and has a static ability of letting us cast creature spells as though they had flash. So we can play all our creatures at instant speed, which makes it a lot more difficult for the opponent to predict what we'll do next and to play around our different cards and also lets us play our creatures at instant speed on the opponent's end of turn, so we can play around sorcery speed sweeper effects, which is also pretty important for our deck. Then her plus one gives one of our creatures vigilance and reach until our next turn, and then the minus two provides a bit of card advantage. We can look at the top three cards of our library, exile one face down, the rest goes on the bottom, and then we can cast that card if it's a creature. And then at four mana we've got the full place at a frilled mystic, a 3-2 creature with flash that when it enters battlefield can counter target spell, so it gives us access to a counter spell in creature form, which of course also helps us trigger Okatra and also plays great alongside Vivian, since if we keep up a bunch of mana, our opponent doesn't know if we have a Frilled Mystic or just any random creature that we can play at instant speed. And finally we have four copies of Hydroid Crisis as another great tool in this deck, since we have so many mana creatures to help us ramp, so we can sink a lot of mana into the X, and Hydroid Crisis enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, and is a flying trampling creature as well. And when we cast Hydroid Crisis, so it doesn't even have to resolve in the face of a counter spell, we gain half X life and draw half X cards around it down each time, so that provides more card advantage and more life when facing aggressive decks. And of course we've got the full four copies of God Eternal Okatra at five mana. Then the mana base is pretty straightforward, three forests alongside four temple gardens and four breeding pools to provide 11 untapped green sources for Lanor Elves on turn one. And then we also have the full playset of Hallowed Fountain as another shock land, and then a bunch of check lands, two Glacial Fortress, three Sun Petal Grove, and then also the full playset of Hinterland Harbor. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn 2 mana creature, turn 3 we have some options. Facing Forest Lanorals. Let's play our time Breeding Pool. It's gonna be a turn 2 Steel Leaf Champion. Pretty powerful start for the Mono Green Stompy deck. Let's play our Druid. And then we're probably gonna be forced to Deputy the Steel Leaf. Hopefully they play a second one. Steel Leaf gets in for 5. It's gonna be Paradise Druid instead. Into Growth Chamber Guardian. Well, I've got a few options. We could also play a 4-3 Knight of Autumn to try and trade for Steel Leaf and keep Deputy to exile multiple Growth Chamber Guardians. 
I don't think we can pass and keep up Thrilled Mystic, because then we're going to take at least 9 damage. I think I like the Knight of Autumn play. And that's going to discourage an attack from the Paradise Roots. They can attack with the Growth Chamber Guardian and adapt. But then we can maybe exile multiple Guardians with a Deputy. Interesting, Paradise Root is still attacking. Well, then I'll block that one and take more damage, that's fine. Do they have a Pump Spell? Alright, so we got to kill the Paradise Roots. Opponent wanted to push some extra damage, place another Growth Chamber Guardian. And there's Okatra. Now we are pretty low on life. If we take two to play Okatra here, then we're gonna be dead, so that's not an option. So yeah, we're gonna have to go for Deputy. Exile those Growth Chamber Guardians. And I don't think I take two to play a Growth Chamber here. Just gonna say go. And then next turn hope to resolve Okatra and take over. Alright, they had another Growth Chamber Guardian in hand, sadly, but that's okay. And Alana Elves. And they're not offering the trade, even though the Pelt Collector would grow if they trade Steely for Knight of Autumn. But this is our opportunity to deploy Oketra. And technically we're stable, and then once we get to untap with Oketra, we can take over the late game pretty easily. Just gotta watch out for a big trampling Galta. So, Growth Chamber Guardian adapts, finds the last Growth Chamber Guardian. No attacks from our opponents, and now we get to go crazy. We can play three creatures, or we can keep up Frilled Mystic and play Lunar Elves. I think the only way we can lose is if our opponent plays a Galta. But even then, we can probably make enough tokens. So, I think I'm just gonna deploy more creatures here. Make sure we get that board presence. And that's gonna prompt a concession from our opponent, they know they can beat this. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. We've got a selection of mana creatures on turn 2, into maybe a turn 3 Frilled Mystic, and there's Okatra right on cue. Facing a turn 1 Overgrown Tomb, so it could be some sort of mid-range deck. Upon the Flourishing, could also be a Citadel of Bolas combo deck. Or maybe a Commanded Red Horde, Planeswalker deck as we see Davriel. So they do have some Planeswalkers in there at least. And I like playing the Paradise Druid since if they do play Davriel and Minus, the Druid can also decide to just kill the Planeswalker. If they don't play Davriel, we still have a few options. It's gonna be a Jade Light Ranger. Find Liliana land, so this is pointing towards a Planeswalker heavy deck here. And we could just keep up Frilled Mystic, the problem there is if our opponent doesn't play into it, we don't have a great play. So it might be better to just go Incubation Druid plus Growth Chamber Guardian, and then the Adapt on the Growth Chamber Guardian can mask the Frilled Mystic a little bit better. And we also want that extra mana to help us ramp into Oketra. So we'll see here. If our mana creature survived, then we could run out Okatra first. If they make us discard with Davriel, we can discard Knight of Autumn. Double Jade Light Ranger could get rid of both of them if we draw Deputy of Detention. And a Spark Harvest killing Growth Chamber Guardian sacking a Jade Light, fair enough. Time to play Okatra and hope she sticks around. And then next turn we might have a Frilled Mystic to counter Liliana before she comes down. Davriel's fine. So what do we get rid of? I think Knight of Autumn still. I think our point's more a Planeswalker heavy deck than a Citadel of Bolas type deck where we would maybe want a Knight of Autumn to destroy it. And Druid is just a cheaper creature we can play to trigger Okatra and maybe still keep up Frilled Mystic. Alright, so it's not going to be very subtle here. 
if we take two, but I think it's the right play. At least we don't have any blue mana up, so we're disguising the Frilled Mystic pretty well. And this is fine to attack, since your opponent doesn't have any good blocks. Opponent is jumping. Say go. We're gonna have to discard this Hydroid Crisis, but so be it. Too important that we counter this Liliana. Or if they try and kill a Catra, we'll counter that too. So now we're very far ahead on board. Just gotta try and protect this board advantage. Lose a bit of life to Davriel, that's okay. Back up Frilled Mystic, so we really want to make sure we kill the Planeswalker here so we can keep the Frilled Mystic in hand. So let's send a zombie and a Frilled Mystic at Davriel, and then Okatra and another zombie at our opponent. Don't think we quite want to trade away these Paradise Druids to push damage. And then I imagine Davriel will just die, and then our opponent will take 10 damage here. And if our opponent doesn't play into our Frilled Mystic, we can just adapt the Incubation Druid. So not only does Frilled Mystic play well with Vivian, but it also plays well with our 8 Adapt Creatures, Incubation Druid and Growth Chamber Guardian, since we kind of get to disguise the fact that we might have an instant speed play. Thanks to our Adapt Creatures, so Vivian is a fine one to counter here as well. And I'm pretty sure we have Lethal on board. If we swing with everyone, they chump Oketra. They still take more than 13. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with... a. Uh, Decent hand, a bunch of mana creatures into a Hydroid Crisis. Of course, hoping to draw into an Okatra at some points. Some interaction would be nice. Thought Erasure probably takes away Hydroid Crisis since we've got such a redundant hand of mana creatures. And we'll have to watch out for Cry of the Carnarium sweeping away all our mana dorks. And instead, they decide to take Incubation Druid. Fair enough. So they might have another Thought Erasure lined up for the Hydroid Crisis and. They think Incubation Druid is the scariest of the mana creatures we could play on turn 2. Alright, they put another Thought Erasure in the graveyard, which could line up with our theory of our opponent having another discard spell in hand. So we'll run out to Paradise Druid. Opponent on Esper and a Thief of Sanity. Fair enough. Okatra the draw. I think I'm okay just playing a 2 2 Crisis to try and block the Thief. I imagine they'll have a removal spell for the Krasis. But then we get to play Okatra and hopefully leverage Okatra. Alright, Oath of Kaya kills Krasis. Thief hits us. If they can kill Okatra on the spot, it's probably game over because then the Thief also gets to find Okatra if we decide to shuffle her back, so we will have to just let her die. And then we don't really have a great plan to follow up with, since we're lacking any late game cards. So Okatra or busts. I guess we can run out to Sun Petal Grove so we don't have to take two. Five mana. Even Teferi would be a decent answer to Okatra here. And it's gonna be Teferi Time Raveler. Well, at least. We get to replay Okatra next turn, and if they attack with Thief, Druid can kill Teferi. But every time the Thief hits us, opponent gets to draw the best card of our top three. And it's gonna be an Incubation Druid. So that could chump Paradise Druid if we try and kill Teferi. We'll go for it anyway. Take some damage from Oath of Kaya. And our opponent does decide to chump. Replay Oketra. And yeah, we just need to be able to untap with Oketra and play a couple creatures and then we have a chance. If that doesn't happen, it's probably game over now. Opponent's got five cards to work with and they still haven't attacked with Thief. And it's gonna be Mortify killing Oketra, so now we definitely don't wanna shuffle her back. Otherwise our opponent gets to find her with Thief. But I don't see us winning this game anymore. Need to top deck Hydroid Crisis pretty much. Or another Oketra. 
I guess that works. Play Okatra, play Paradise Root, make a token right away. Probably beats trying to kill Teferi. So let's go for it. We are down to 9 life, and there is an Oath of Kaya in play, which punishes us for attacking Planeswalkers. But at least now we've got some board presence. Don't worry, I got this. So now top decking Hydroid Crisis would put us right back in the game. I think we're still pretty far behind at the moment. Hero of Precinct 1 is gonna start gumming up the ground. And a deputy that they got with Thief of Sanity can get rid of our Okatra. So once again we'll decline. He finds another card, and a land to draw, so yeah, I think we're pretty dead. Can send this at the ferry, take another damage from Oath, they can just jump with the token, and they're just too far ahead with the Thief here, we drew a few too many lands along the way. And being a green deck, we don't have a ton of answers for a turn 3 Thief on the play. We could decide to play some number of guard mages at 4 mana instead of maybe some frilled mystics or some other creatures. Since they do block the Thief of Sanity favorably if we can play them early. But there's not a ton of room for additional 4 mana creatures in this deck. And Hydroid Crisis also fills a similar role to the guard mage already, being a flying creature that gains life and draws cards. Even if the guard mage is slightly more efficient at 4 mana than the Crisis. Knight of Autumn shows up and becomes a 4-3. And I think Hydroid Crisis would have been the only card to potentially save us, but Hallowed Fountain doesn't quite do it here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn 2 Mana Creature, turn 3 Vivian. Try and leverage Vivian as a card draw engine. And then some Growth Chamber Guardians as well has more creatures to maybe pressure opposing Planeswalkers with. Let's lead with Basic Forest. And let's see what we're up against. It's gonna be turn one forest into Arboreal Grazer, so opponent on a ramp deck here. Opponent could be on the mono green Tron deck, is what people have been calling it. So we might see the Nissa Planeswalker uh, ramping into Ugin's. Karn the Great Creator fetching all sorts of cards out of the sideboard. And then the Explorer package to help against aggro decks. And there we see Karn the Great Creator go to the graveyard. Opponent looking for lands perhaps. Alright, so we can play Vivian and then still trade off for the Jade Light. Or we could deploy more creatures before we play Vivian, which might be better here. Yeah, let's play Guardian and then Incubation Druid and have our defenses up before we deploy our Planeswalker so we can better protect Vivian. Wayward Surtooth. Plus a land and another Paradise Druid. Put on down to one card in hand so we can hope that that card is not one of their powerful Planeswalkers. And Jade Light's gonna stay back. Backup Vivian's good to have, so let's start by playing Vivian. See what we can find. Hydroid Crisis, perfect. And then we can play Guardian of Instant Speed here, so no need to play him right now. Could Shock so we can represent the Adapt on the Growth Chamber Guardian, that's probably worth it here. Taking two against this deck doesn't seem like a very big cost. And it could be better to adapt the Guardian than to play another one here. Opponent has a City's Blessing, so Surtooth can attack. So let's see what they do. And we could let Vivian die if we wanted to. And then just eat the Jade Light Ranger for free. I think that's worth it, otherwise we would have to double block Guardian and Paradise Root on the Surtooth and it would get to kill both. I would rather keep my mana producers for this crisis. And then for now we can eat this Jade Light Ranger. Jade Light Ranger, a merfolk, so probably tastes like sushi. Uh, not 
again. And another Paradise Druid, so our opponent is lacking their big finishers here. Alright, so do we want to deploy another Vivian, or do we just play a big Krasis here? Axe equals 5, can trade for Swordtooth, that seems good enough. And then I'm okay attacking with the Growth Chamber Guardian, since I would be happy with the double block from the Paradise Druids. Crisis chains into another Crisis, and we still have our Vivian to provide some more card advantage. All right, interesting addition here. So now the Swordtooth can attack past the Crisis, so it wasn't actually a bad draw. But we can easily take out the Planeswalker and then have more creatures back on defense. So what's our plan? I don't mind just attacking with Krasis to make sure we kill the Planeswalker, since even if they block with the Grazer we trample over to kill the Planeswalker here. And then I think I'm playing Vivian. This block doesn't make a ton of sense since the Planeswalker would die anyway, so they kind of just threw away the Grazer for free. I think I'm still playing Vivian over playing another Krasis. Find another Krasis. And what do we want to do? I guess we can play these at instant speed, so let's just play a tap land for now. And then we can try and double block the Swordtooth, flash in some creatures, next turn play a big Krasis. Nissa's Triumph. Find some more forests. We do have to be careful when our opponent does eventually find one of their big payoff cards, like a Nissa like an Ugin or a Karn the Great Creator, which can find all sorts of powerful cards out of the sideboard. But for now, we can flash in a Guardian. And then just double block. Have another Guardian in hand anyway. And I would rather keep the Druid to cast bigger Krasis. And we'll flash in... I guess the Lenor Elves makes more sense. Untap. Give Grace's Vigilance. You fight like a city brat. Attack. And I might just main face Grace's, even though we can play that in some speed, just so we can maybe hit our land drop. So X equals uh, 7 here, I think. And now if we get to untap with Thrilled Mystic up, it's game over. But I guess our opponent's also just taking lethal on board here. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Mono Green Tron. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 2 mana creature. Turn 3, got a few options. And we've got a Hydroid Crisis to leverage all these mana creatures. Facing a turn 1 Watery Grave. Let's run out Paradise Druid, which at least will survive a spot removal spell here. And let's see if they've got the turn to Thought Erasure. They usually do. It's going to be a Hero Precinct 1 instead. Alright, I think we keep developing our mana. And I'm not going to attack with the Paradise Druid, I don't think. And then next turn we can start playing Hydroid Crisis. The first one for X equals 4 if our mana creatures survive. Third land untapped, so it could be a Thief of Sanity, could be a Mortify, could be Teferi. Opponent considering an attack, I think I would trade Paradise Root for Hero here if they offered. But our opponent's gonna stay back. Alright, let's run out Krasis. And that might get mortified end of turn, but that's okay, we got to draw our cards. And next turn we get to do it again with an even bigger crisis, or we could develop our mana even more. Fourth land untapped. Could be a Bell Haunt or Sorin, could be double two drop. It's gonna be Seraph over the Scales instead. 
And our opponent hits us for three. Frilled Mystic, decent pickup. Although I don't think we can keep it up right now. Or can we? I guess it's kind of reasonable. This turn we can play Paradise Druids plus Tap Lands. Or I guess even play our Sun Petal Grove untapped, so we threaten Adapt on Incubation Druid. And then keep up our Frilled Mystic. If our opponent doesn't play into the Frilled Mystic, we can Adapt Druid and maybe play Bigger Crisis next turn. We will take a bit of damage from the Seraph. But it could be worth it here. Seraph gains Vigilance. That's fine. If we adapt the Druid end of turn, we might see them use a removal spell on it. Which would be unfortunate, but at least they're using a removal on our 2-drop instead of on our more expensive creatures. And the points is going to pass, so now we get to adapt. And let's see if they kill the Druid. They don't. Alright, so time to play Giant Crisis. So we've got 5 mana, 11 mana total. So X equals 9. Seems okay. Don't think we need to keep up anything. So the Crisis is probably not going to survive, but we got to draw a few cards. We got to gain a bit of life. And no removal end of turn. So our opponent was clearly trying to play around Frilled Mystic there. But that's why the Adapt creatures are so powerful alongside the Frilled Mystic in this list. And now Vivian as well to let us play even more at instant speed. Alright. I think our opponent messed up. They wanted to give Sarah Vigilance, but they moved to the second main phase. Alright, so what do we want to do? I think we start by playing Vivian. See if this resolves. Could get Dovin vetoed. That's fine. Can counter the Vito with our Filled Mystic. We could use Deputy to clean up the tokens, so even if they kill Deputy they don't get anything back. Or we could just Deputy the Seraph. And then start attacking with the Giant Crisis and protect it with Filled Mystic. That might be the play. Alright, let's play a Deputy. And attack for 9. And then I think we can afford to play the Stapped. So yeah, our opponent's at 7 life, they need to deal with Hydroid Crisis, and they simply can't since we also still have the Frilled Mystic backup. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, got a turn 1 Lander Elves, turn 2 Incubation Druid into a big Crisis, and Deputy for interaction, so... Decent keep. Lead with Lanner Elves. And let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Mountain. Firebrand kills Lanner Elves. Fair enough. The Monoret matchup is pretty bad for our deck. Have a lot of shock lands, don't have a lot of removal, so an early Steamkin's difficult to beat. And cards like Deputy of Detention aren't very reliable against a deck full of 3 damage burn spells. Being on the play definitely helps. Our main game plan is basically to try and stick an early Okatra to take over the board and then try and kill them before they burn us out. No Okatra in sight. We could send back Knight of Autumn to destroy Experimental Frenzy. Or we could just run out a 4-3 which dies to a 3 damage burn spell. Don't love using Deputy on the Pyromancer, but it might be the play for now. Since I kind of want to wait on Crisis until we can play a bigger one. So I guess we'll play a Deputy here. If they kill Deputy, they get to deal 2 more damage with Pyromancer, but the Pyromancer would have attacked for 2 regardless, even if they killed Knight of Autumn with a 3 damage removal spell. Saving Deputy for Steamkin would have been better, but they didn't play one on turn two, so we assume they didn't have a Steamkin in hand, they might have drawn it for the turn. So I would like to play Growth Chamber Guardian and Adapt right away, for opponent has a Shock, they can mess that up. But wouldn't they have Shocked Incubation Druids? Probably. Yeah, I don't think uh, 
they have the shock, so I'm going to go for it. Get another one, and now we've got a 4-4 Guardian, and 4 Toughness is kind of the magic number against the red deck. It means they have to use at least 2 burn spells to finish off our creature. And the board is relatively under control now. With a 4-4 Growth Chamber Guardian, although Pyromancer plus Wizard's Lightning are scary cards to face. So is it time yet to play a big Krasis, or do we want to level up our Incubation Druid and then next turn go for an even bigger one? And I guess if we take two, we can adapt Incubation Druid and play Growth Chamber Guardian. And then we need our Incubation Druid to survive, and then next turn we can play pretty big Krasis. Let's see if they go after Growth Chamber Guardian or Deputy of Detention. They're just going to use Steamkin for mana first. Light the stage. What does it find? A Mountain Shock. So they could use both removal spells to kill Incubation Druid here. Or they can pick off Deputy and Guardian, which seems to be the case here. Pyromancer comes back into play. Two more damage, down to seven. It's not inconceivable that our opponent just burns us out, but they're gonna point some damage at our creatures. Guardian down, so we still have our 4-4 to block Steamkin. But the Chain Warlord does get a free attack here because of the Firebrand. So I'm happy to trade for Steamkin. Take three. That to a three damage burn spell, but looks like we get to untap. Krasis for X equals 6, which is an even number, so no need to play Hallowed Fountain. Play the tapped. Say go. Still in a very precarious position here, since any burn spell still kills us. But if they had a burn spell, we probably would have seen it last turn. Opponent's gonna jam with everyone. So we're taking at least five, that to a shock. And there's a shock, which they drew for the turn. Alright, so we almost managed to stabilize against the red deck, just needed to fade one burn spell for a turn, and then we would have had Frilled Mystic back up as well. Oh well, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand, a bunch of mana dorks, and a Growth Chamber Guardian to leverage all that extra mana. Do need some blue mana for Filled Mystic eventually, but a single blue source will help us thanks to Incubation Druid. And there's a Hinterland Harbor, so we will get access to a turn 3 Filled Mystic. And there's Oketra, it's gonna be a good one too. It is somewhat tempting to sand back Lanarelves since they're nice follow ups to Oketra as cheap ways to make. A 4-4 token, but I think we just want the mana acceleration. Cast down killing Incubation Druid is actually a pretty big deal since now we don't have double white for a Catra and we don't have double blue for Mystic. Not a force of the top. So we're forced to just play this and adapt. Adapt main phase to play around removal. And yeah, we're just hoping to draw either white or blue mana. Have one more forest in the deck, which would be a bad draw. Everything else goes. Vivian pluses, but we have a guardian to pressure her. Finds Carnage Tyrant, that's a big one. All right, there's our Hallowed Fountain. So let's send guardian at Vivian, they could even take a hit. They're gonna chump. Well, we can't counter Carnage Tyrant, so might as well run out of Catra here. And hope she gets to untap for a turn. Alright, untap lands. No Fivian pluses. Like I do. Hostage taker would be bad news instead it's a forest, so looks like they're just gonna run out Carnage Tyrant. 
Alright. Vivian is not too far from ultimating, but we do get our value from Okatra here. Play Growth Chamber Guardian. We could adapt and play another Growth Chamber Guardian. I would rather keep a Frilled Mystic. So we'll send Okatra and Vivian. Opponent could trade for Carnage Tyrants. Do we also send a Growth Chamber Guardian then? Then they get to eat the Guardian. Vivian still survives. So I think this makes more sense. And then we can just play Forest so we can still keep a Frilled Mystic in case of like a fine finality. Opponent does go for the trade. So Vivian gets to survive. So it's going to be like that, huh? Put a Catra back into our deck. Say go. And we've got a Frilled Mystic up. We are ahead on board, so we just want to try and leverage that advantage. We can adapt the Growth Chamber Garden if our opponent doesn't play into Frilled Mystic, although then we would shuffle away Oketra, which is not something we really want to do. Another Wild Growth Walker. Mostly want to keep Frilled Mystic for Find Finality. I don't think I'm countering a Wild Growth Walker. Hydroid Crisis. Do we want to counter that? Axe equals 5, so that kind of stonewalls our entire offense. Yeah, Find Finality is going to be an issue, but I think I'm countering that. And alright, our opponent concedes, so they must not have had a Sweeper. Didn't quite have lethal on the way back, but we were pretty close to just killing our opponent, as well as taking out Vivian. Alright, sweet, so managed to beat Soltai midrange. That's going to conclude our video for today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.